I would like to start with one lie that we have been told by all over the world. It's nothing about Holland or nothing about Europe. We were we were led to believe that basic human needs are food, clothing, and shelter. And all everything is society is designed around these organizing principles about getting food, clothing, and shelter. And the way of getting those food, clothing, and shelter is through working in the labor market. But that that's a lie, according to me. But if we say the basic, I mean, food, clothing, and shelter, every mammal requires, and every animal requires, every bird wants. Lives on food, and so there's nothing unique about human needs. If we say human needs are, my proposition is dignity, freedom, and equality. And if we design our society based on these principles, probably we will not definitely we will design in a different way. Patrick's example was very clear that it's almost like a penalizing system. Stigmatizing system. If you are not part of this model, and this society is designed to produce these kinds of human beings to run this society, that's what it is. So we have to make it unpleasant, so that we get out of that hospital or mental asylum or prison, so that you work towards becoming like everyone. So the inevitability of basic income society is because of this, and also the crisis that we are going to face. We are, we are already facing. Okay, let me not take. Assume all of you are aware of what we I mean by a basic income. A basic income has these five characteristics. Only when it has all the five characteristics that you can call it a basic. Income. Like Patrick was right in saying that it was not a true basic income because a true basic income is permanent from the day you are born till you die. So it's cash only and not any coupons or any other forms of uh, in-kind transfers. Groceries given to you, a food bank you are allowed to enter. It's individual and not to the households. Mostly the poverty alleviation programs in India or in many of the global south countries is the subsidies are given to the household. This is individual. Every individual from the newborn baby to the senior citizen, everybody gets it. It's periodical, which is monthly usually. It is universal and not targeted in the sense that it's to the poor. Or to those who are uh, unable to be in the labor market, is disabled, able versus disabled, and all that is. And the most important thing is that it is unconditional. You don't have to do anything, produce any kind of situation to become qualified. You don't have to do anything to. You don't have to produce any output, show good behavior in order to continue getting a basic income. So this sounds a very simple idea, but it's a very radical idea, and you have you see a lot of objections to implementing this idea. Now I will not go through everything, but I would like to just say that this basic income is part of our basic income society that we are visualizing. Which is necessary, and that basic income society is based on the assumptions of what are the human needs. The human needs are dignity, equality, and uh, freedom. And we are led to believe that we have freedom now, but that is not the real freedom. Real freedom is when you are completely free to be yourself and you can thrive and flourish. So one or two things I pick up from here that when you give anything unconditionally, it breeds trust. And giving to every individual in a society unconditionally, you create a larger trust among people, a trust between state and citizens, trust within the community. So it's based on trust, and uh, more importantly, a basic income society that we are in, we are. Imagining and want to be built 
is a caring society. So care, without being a caring society, we can't talk about basic income. So for me and for Bian, basic income is about caring. Caring as individuals, as a community, and caring. We also want the state to be a caring institution rather than punishing institution. So care is intrinsic to the idea and imagination of a basic income society and a future society already we see right now. These are some facts about European societies about income insecurity. Even in Europe, if you see here, one person population feels highest levels of security on all five parameters that they have done. And the five parameters are personal insecurity, housing insecurity, healthcare insecurity, employment insecurity, old age insecurity. Where all this, if you have a mass of insecure workers and people and families, if that is the trend, what kind of politicians will thrive? Who, don't you think the politicians who will play on their insecurities and create utopias of dealing with those insecurities like nationalism, racism, religious uh, fundamentalism, you can name it that they, the politicians all over the world are now creating their own utopias to play on their, the insecurities of the slaves. You can see it everywhere happening. So this is leading to a socio-political crisis. Now I will not go so much into welfare crisis because the welfare was designed for, yeah, the welfare was basically designed for exceptions. But now, today, the exceptions are becoming the majority. So, what the government simultaneously is doing also is that offloading its own responsibilities to the market. And market is very cruel in the sense it has a plan for the winners but no plan for the losers. So the, that is taken care of only by the family and community. This is a briefly, I would like to pause here. What is the ethical moral crisis that we are all facing now? That is based on what is the meaning of our life? Is it consumption? Market come, is coming through the digital means in every form to tell us what we should buy, what we should consume. After this, I would like to close and stop. All these four crises of the employment crisis, uh, socio-political crisis, and welfare crisis, and the uh, environmental crisis and extinction crisis, they're all interrelated to the way we have organized our society. Can basic income solve all these problems? That's not the point. Uh, that's not the point. Uh, do we look at basic income as the foundation of a new society that we need to rebuild. We need to build that society. But basic income is only the foundation. And the caring institutions, care institutions have to be the weaving thread of that society that we want to build. On this foundation, we need to build the basic income society, which is based on not mistrust and control, but based on care and trust. So, I mean, that is the hope that is also there. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We can have this discussion.